Rape is the cheapest and possibly the oldest weapon of war. It's also the least condemned and most silenced war crime. It's against that backdrop that Israeli rights groups are trying to raise awareness about reports of sexual violence committed by Hamas militants during the October 7th attack. This week, protesters demonstrated outside the UN office in Jerusalem, calling on it to address the issue of violence against women by Hamas. Some Israeli activists say the UN is downplaying the issue. The UN says it has requested access to collect information about the attacks, but it has not received a response from Israel. Christina Lamb is chief correspondent for the Sunday Times, and she's also the author of the book Our Bodies, Their Battlefield, in which she chronicles the lives of women in wartime and how sexual violence against them is used as a weapon. Christina, so good to see you again. You're in Israel at the moment. What have you heard about the sexual violence perpetrated by Hamas on and after October 7th? So I've spoken to a number of women's organizations uh, and police and others who all say that they have a body of evidence from people uh, largely at the music festival on October the 7th, um, eyewitnesses of women, young women being brutally raped, gang raped um, at the festival and uh, a, a lot of other atrocities against women. How does that compare to what you've been able to document in other attacks and conflicts? So, uh, I mean, the problem here at the moment is that there are no survivors have actually come forward. So this is all... Um, information coming either from people who were like first responders or people who were hiding that day and say that they saw things or also videos that Hamas themselves put out at the time as we know they were kind of live streaming some of the atrocities and also from interrogations from Hamas fighters who have been caught so there, you know, there is quite a, a, a body of evidence um, suggesting that this, you know, happened and um, was systematic. Uh, it unfortunately is something that we see in every conflict. There has been widespread criticism of international women's organizations and the UN not responding appropriately to the acts of sexual violence perpetrated on October 7th. There have been protests and hashtags like Me Too unless you're a Jew have been trending. Why the silence, you think? I think part of it is that we haven't actually had any survivors come forward. And there, you know, let's be honest, there's been a lot of propaganda in this conflict generally. So, uh, you know, um, there's been a tendency to, to doubt a lot of things because quite often things we're told at the beginning turn out not to be true. Um, but so that's one of the reasons that I came here to actually, you know, go and talk to people and try and find out for myself as much as you can what's really happening. And certainly, you know, there are people that were collecting the the bodies and body remains talk about, you know, clear evidence, forensic evidence that women were raped and brutally raped uh, before. They were killed. I mean, in some cases, you know, so violently that their pelvic bones were broken. Um, so there's a lot of anger here among women's groups that this isn't being taken seriously. They think in uh, the international community and that different standards uh, are, are being applied. Um, I mean, one thing I would say is usually. Because they're saying that there's, the international community puts out statements very quickly about this in other places. I'm not sure that that people in Ethiopia, for example, would agree. Women there were, you know, complaining for months that this was happening before anybody said anything. 
if you look at DRC, I think the figures say something like 60,000 women have been raped this year. So, Hmm. and nobody's really talking about that. So you could argue that, you know, um, this is an issue that doesn't get enough attention generally. It's not something specific to to Israel, but it, you know, it is the case that UN women in particular have not put out a, a statement. They could put out a statement, for example, expressing their concern at the reports that, that doesn't commit them to anything. Yeah. The rights groups have been calling for the ICC to investigate the acts of gender-based and sexual violence as a crime against humanity. Now, considering everything that you just laid out and that the ICC has prosecuted only two cases of rape in over 20 years, you know, a scenario as chaotic as the October 7th attack, no survivors who have identified themselves as victims, how hard will it be to establish some sort of accountability? Well, first of all, Israel isn't a member of the ICC, so that rather complicates things. But um, um, as you point out, the ICC does not have a great record on this. It has an appalling record, although the um, current chief prosecutor, Kareem Khan, when he was elected last year, one of his pledges was precisely to do something on this issue. So here is um, a good example um, but, you know, it is very difficult you know, generally to collect evidence on this. But there is uh, there's two things going on here. The police have launched a big investigation and uh, amassing evidence. And there's also a civilian commission. And, and both of these, I mean, it, it shouldn't be the case that you do actually have to have the women themselves come forward in order to believe it, because this is something often very difficult for people to mm. talk about. Right? It, you know, it's the one crime where the victim is often made to feel that they did something wrong, sadly. You've also tried to find an answer to why this keeps happening. Have you found an answer? I mean, it seems clear to me that it's happening more and more and I think one of the reasons is the failure of the international community there is complete impunity sadly rape is a very effective weapon if you want to humiliate your enemy or terrorize them or drive them out of an area and at the moment no one's paying a price for that because almost nobody is brought to justice interestingly I mean the one sort of bright spot in in all of this in terms of getting justice is the use of universal jurisdiction, which means that any country can prosecute somebody for a war crime anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the country where it happened. And Germany is actually pioneer in this because Germany has now um, uh, convicted an Iraqi man for taking a UCD um, mother and child, and the child actually um, was chained up outside and died of thirst. That's the first conviction um, for what happened to the UCDs. So that is something, a model that other countries could be using. That was author and reporter Christina Lamb, chief correspondent for The Sunday Times. I highly recommend you read her book, Our Bodies, Their Battlefield. Thank you so much for your time.